morning everyone i would like to introduce our uh, reward uh, speaker our uh, honorable vice chancellor of north odisha university professor pradeep kumar chan um is a distinguished plant biotechnologist he earned his master degree from mutkal university and obtained his phd degree from the university of nottingham uk as a commonwealth scholar then then he began his teaching career as a faculty at utkal university professor chan was an scrc visiting fellow and insa visiting fellow at the university of delhi south campus new delhi during 1997 98 and 1998 99 respectively he was also a biotechnology overseas associate of uh, dbt india at the university of uh, north hemisphere usa professor chan was the recipient of uh, shyamanan patnaik memorial gold medal uh, for being best graduate in botany honors of utkal university in 1976 he was also awarded the university gold medal in for the standing first among the first class student in msc examination in botany of utkal university in the year 1978 professor chan has made immense contribution to plant biotechnology genetic engineering uh, he has successfully completed several research projects and uh, consultancy guided one dsc 18 phd student and published as many as 69 research paper in reputed journals professor chan has served as an external expert for several scientific advisory evaluation and assessment committee at the state and national levels in recognition of professor chan's commendable work in the field of uh, plant biotechnology he was conferred the samant chandrasekhar award in life science by odisha vigyan academy department of science and technology government of odisha in the year 2014 he was elected a fellow of indian botanical society and society of applied biotechnology he was you know we are extremely privileged to have so renowned an academician as professor chan with us now with great pleasure i invite him to deliver his talk and the title of his uh, lecture is paradigm shift in higher education pedagogy blended learning as the new normal professor chan now it's your time and uh, Uh, i also welcome all the reward vice chancellor and senior bureaucrats of uh, uh, department of uh, higher education uh, to this google meet platform and our participant uh, i request all of you to be disciplined and please enjoy the lecture professor chan now it's your time thank you very much i must say big hello and namaste to all of you from paripada greetings to you from the district of mayurbhanj where i work for north odisha university i am personally grateful to all the vice chancellors and senior bureaucrats of the department of higher education and obviously the catalytic role played by the odisha state higher education council under the dynamic leadership of the chairman and the vice chairman professor ashok das and all others who are viewing this presentation i am grateful personally for this unique opportunity for giving us a web platform and the web link 
to myself and my colleagues at North Orissa University. I'm grateful to, particularly to Professor Deepak Behra and his team who has organized this webinar series during this lockdown period. And I personally thank all of you for being there, listening and watching me. Well, let me restructure my lecture a bit to cut long story short because we are already late. And I have structured my lecture to cover the following components in succession. To begin with, I'll be speaking about how the pedagogy, that would literally mean that the methodology and the process and the practice of teaching, how it has undergone the process of evolution, and what are the major changes, the paradigm shift in the pedagogy from time to time over the years. What I was trying to tell you that I was uh, planning to structure my um, components of my lecture to begin with, to speak about the pedagogical evolution that's taken place over the time and the transformation that it has undertaken in terms of the pattern and system. And then I will move on with you to discuss several principles of the digital pedagogical uh, development in the country and worldwide and what are the major challenges that we face in the process of the pedagogy. Then what are the situations that led to the emergence of the blended learning as the new normal? Because as we already envisaged from our experience because of the COVID-19 that the 100% absolute normalcy will not be restored, but was there in the pre-COVID lockdown period cannot be ensured at the post lockdown period. So we have to go for an optimum situation, what we call as the new normal, which will be acceptable to everybody. And then I will talk about the different models, tools, techniques, components and platforms of the blended learning. And to make the blended learning effective, how we can empower our members of the teaching faculty to the so they will catch up to the expectation of the next generation learners. And what are the new techniques that we can augment both classrooms experience and online self-study? I'll give a few suggestions to be adopted in future. Well, as a problem, let me share with you the whole concept that we run separate time, the Adi Vishya Guru, and the ancient monks, sages, and saints that have contributed immensely to the pedagogical system and knowledge transfer. Uh, heavyweights of the ancient India who have given the world a feeling of higher education at that level and um, that prompted us to establish the world's first university, Takshila at Raul Pindi now, in India, followed by Vikram Shila and Nalanda Mahavira between the years 700 BC to 400 BC. And that time, the contribution of India as a preferred destination of international scholars from all over the world. And once it was being in the field of science, astronomy, medicine, logic, philosophy, metaphysics, yoga, sastra, and Veda, and all that. That came from actually what is meant and uh, referred as the Gurukul teaching. Gurukul Astam, in a uh, residential board where teaching and learning was being impacted, and it was exclusively based on the instructions provided by the great gurus in the form of verbal narrations, and teaching was impacted and learning was taking place 
by the disciples who are listening and writing whatever the guru uh, was telling to them. And this was based on the unflinching devotion uh, and the uncompromising regards uh, to their gurus. And that's how they invite the disciples, invite the spirit of acquiring the knowledge and interrogating the knowledge, internalizing the knowledge. And it's a retirable uh, later stage. And during that uh, narration based teaching, also some amount of experimental learning was involved, like uh, they were given to put to task and uh, asked to learn about uh, uh, how to collect the firewood or uh, feeding the cattle and so on. Some amount of that the 21st century technology has given us um, a technology which uh, anybody can access anywhere, anytime, the process of learning which is taking place and the technology has given us an opportunity. It's a very smart technology I must say, it's called triple A and that is possible due to the advancement in R&D uh, activities um, uh, stemming out from the uh, science and technological revolution and the video based online learning resources were made available and the mobile uh, learning technology make it, made it more portable and uh, the smartphones came in and the tablet computers to replace the conventional dialogue phones, game based learning apps were introduced and new conversational interfaces were made possible by automation of the learning process augmented by artificial intelligence and advanced robotics. Voice uh, recognizable uh, technologies came in and uh, virtual assistants like Siri, Alexa and Google Home came in and uh, the programs of the near human consciousness was almost fed into these small tiny robots and they were almost replacing uh, to some extent the, the teachers and they are called as virtual uh, teaching assistant for the temporary absence of the teachers for some reason and uh, they can uh, empower uh, the teaching uh, process by, by scheduling uh, the, the, the lectures, by providing study resources and also uh, for preparing upcoming classes. Then uh, the uh, immersive learning techniques came in and the virtual reality based immersive technologies with wearable uh, gadgets such as uh, the smart watches and the VR headsets to experience, to make the user to have a feeling, to have experience of a virtual reality, which is almost a near uh, life experience. So visualizing the, the images, animations in 3D and up to 7D, one can have a real uh, life experience in a virtual mode. And this triple A um, concept in the 21st century um, were extended in different forms like the collecting, the measuring data and analyzing it to have a perfect learning analytical tool. That's very important. So learning analytics, adaptive learning, using the computer um, uh, as an interactive teaching device. That, that was very important. And the computer will adapt uh, the differential learning style and ability of the users. Uh, the, the, some of the users are more uh, comfortable uh, with the audio system, just hearing the uh, lectures and, in, uh, and uh, making those intelligible. Some are comfortable with the uh, visible mode or visualizing in form of visuals. So different styles and different ability of perceptions of the users could be um, adjusted by the computer programs. So um, the cloud computing uh, came in, uh, where which ensured on demand availability of computer store resources from the cloud storage and those are made available uh, to the students at, uh, at private at well. Then machine learning uh, which allowed us, permitted us to have 
large scale wide array detection of the, uh, the process whether learning has been actually taking place at the uh, at, at, at the reception center. What is very important is not the knowledge transfer. More importance should be given to how the law, the the, uh, the users are capable of acquiring the knowledge and understand the the the, the message uh, in on an interface which is being provided at the sort of a platform which must be friendly to them. So it seems that over the years there has been a progressive change in the paradigm, the pattern, the system of knowledge transfer and um, several indicators were identified. For example, uh, the focus was shifted from the narration or instruction unidirectional best teaching to actually to ensure that learning uh, to take place. That's very important. And um, the, with respect to the nature of uh, the, the learning material and the, um, the uh, teaching learning process, the didactic model of teaching, which is mostly an instructional best to, to the uh, construction best of teaching, where the new knowledge can be constructed. And uh, in addition to uh, the lecture best delivery of information, learning uh, made more participatory. So these sort of changes from the traditional paradigm, new age paradigm to this, and uh, taking it forward. The role of a teacher was also uh, to uh, to have a transformation. Yes, in addition to becoming uh, a provider of information, the teacher has to facilitate the process of learning. So a teacher has to empower himself as a co-learner and he must acquire the knowledge, chew it up uh, and assimilate it and then make it um, uh, to pass to the user, the students, the, the, the target uh, learning um, uh, persons who are uh, supposed to be facilitated by the uh, pre-chewing of the teacher on certain courses. So um, shifting was from the discrete and discrete mode of uh, the learning material and rote memorization to more of an experiential learning that, that took place the, the, and commensurating with the shift in curriculum. Such type of paradigm shift were necessary and evolution assessment also uh, suffered from uh, certain changes and to their all welcome changes. And the assessment and the, um, the quantification of the, um, the uh, ability of the learners to perceive that was also necessary and that could be done uh, in, in a better way by this new type of teaching or pedagogical approaches. Then basically the principle of uh, the uh, new age paradigm in the digital pedagogy as we call it, they are governed by different principles like the choice choosing the appropriate medium, the interface, the, the, the platform. Like for example if you have telling the student how uh, a bird flies, the flaming, the flaming was how they fly. You can't use a, a, only an audio mode using a radio. So you have different, you have a different voice of a radio that may not be acceptable uh, to this, the, the, the learners, which can make it effective if you go for a, a TV voice. Or so, so you, are ex, you are explaining how uh, the, the waterfalls make a barbering sound or a brook cascading up the mountain subsidy pond or how the aircraft flies. Uh, so this sort of uh, medium message compatibility must be there. The lessons are the message and the medium is the platform. The way how they have to be uh, transferred. So that makes the message of the lessons more credible and 
and the the, uh, the, 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 the pitch, the volume, the lip sync, uh, which all govern the language proficiency, also have to be uh, adequate. And there should not be any lag between this, the spatial and the temporal. So this sort of lags or the gaps must not be uh, there. So there should be perfect synchronic of the video, audio content, and commentaries and all that. And so the techno pedagogy came up as a very effective method of teaching. And the face-to-face -face type techno pedagogy is considered as the most effective and ideal. And there must be a perfect uh, story. The lesson plan must be configured in such a way that um, they will be acceptable uh, as such. And the, the combination of the content, the pedagogy, the technical, the synergy and symbiosis between them was very important. And then the coordination between all the different types of stakeholders for making a story. Like the script writer, the, 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 uh, the animator, the designer, the graphic designer and all that, they must act hand to hand in perfect coordination to make this very much coherent and compatible. So, um, say for example, a friendly, uh, say, uh, humanized voice that is much more acceptable to the user than a mechanized throat. Okay. So, because just like a baby, you know, he or she is so familiar with the voice of his or her mother, maybe the mother is singing the same lullaby to lull him or to sleep, but the baby insists, instead of uh, appreciating the, the, the noise uh, in form of music from a radio or TV, the baby will insist on her more, more, more mother to, to sing the same lullaby. So the presence of the uh, presenter as an object and a friendly voice in more personalized touch is much more important in such type of online learning system, but there were challenges. So as we have already experienced during this COVID lockdown period, that despite all this um, e-learning uh, digital baskets, uh, which are provided by the, uh, are ready to be provided by the teachers to the students, there were uh, not an absolute success. So it's always it is, um, uh, it's better to uh, be slapped with the truth than kissed with a lie. We have already realized that um, despite that the that India has undergone a digital transformation over the years, and it is making efforts to keep pace with the changing dynamics of higher education by implementing the online learning process. But as far our experience goes on, uh, and we have recently experienced uh, during this COVID lockdown, that we, our teachers, despite their uh, efforts, they were unable to connect majority of the students. Because the video sharing bandwidth which are provided uh, were not actually, hello? Yes, sir. Is it okay? Proceed. Yeah, it's okay. Proceed. Fine. So, <clears throat> even if they have the hand, hand, handsets um, of say 4 facility, but the students, when they have been uh, off campus and dissociated from the teachers during this lockdown period, they were unable to access uh, the information provided to them because the 4 facility was not actually made available to them. So that, that was the problem uh, because uh, in remote villages, the, uh, the, the government of India through the Digital India uh, platform, they have given maximum 100 uh, megabits of bandwidth. So, but, but, but for, uh, for accessing a good quality video for eight hours a day, for example, to require about 300 GB uh, per month. And for a session, it were about three to 10 um, uh, MBPs per session for a video sharing bandwidth, which is not actually possible uh, to have in all villages, unless the villages are actually uh, computer smart or syllogists. So, uh, so it, is, it has been very difficult for us, for our teachers at Northwest University, for example, 
to connect 100% of the students of campus. And because of the socio-economic disparity among the students, it has not been possible for them to afford for purchasing the data pack like a dongle or laptop uh, because they are not very affordable for them. And there are also uh, linguistic barriers like uh, in social science, uh, the students have been denied of the lack of uh, denied of the contents in the regional languages. And there is less of an emotional connect with the students because the teacher was not made available. So a faceless interaction would obviously be ineffective. And the teachers were not ready, although they, some of them were quite tech savvy, but not everybody, but this unprecedented situation due to COVID-19 lockdown and um, appropriate platforms were always not made available to be harnessed and um, uh, all the different stakeholders, the PG and undergraduate students, the scholars, teachers and all these different stakeholders were not actually ready for such a situation and the government was not also prepared for it so policy guidelines were reg regulating the, uh, the ethical practices which should be actually maintained as a class on as a class of discipline that could that, that those were not there. So it was very difficult to maintain the sanctity and integrity of these classrooms. So one has to have, have to deny or block access to inappropriate contents. So we have to go for also the mechanism how to protect our information and protect them against hacking, block all external sources to access the e-contents and all that. So this, these problems actually led us to um, envisage a situation like this, uh, which would be very appropriate uh, to be taken up in recent years because now it is Corona, there may be some other virus and pathogen, some nasty um, uh, these pathogens in for bacteria, whatever, viruses and all that. So they will keep coming. And we have to stay with this. And maybe with a different name, a different price tag of death toll, they will keep coming. So uh, we have already realized the relevance of the uh, classroom teaching. And we have also realized the relevance of the e-learning and their uh, deficiency. So they need to be blended, to be complementary to one another, to supplement each other and to complement each other. So in the uh, post-COVID break the uh, lockdown period, we can uh, envisage a new type of situation and the optimum pedagogical uh, practices or approaches must evolve. And that is what is called as a new normal pedagogy by blending the benefits of the classroom training, the classroom teaching and the digital teaching mode. And uh, basically, <clears throat> as we have all realized that there is a emotional connectivity or a bond between the teacher and the student in F to F mode and that cannot be substituted. No Google can uh, replace uh, a guru and no technology can substitute a teacher. So that passion of the teachers to teach, the passionate nature of the teacher, the value-based uh, teaching practice, which is deeply embedded and deep-seated and uh, embedded in our classical teaching must not be compromised at any cost. Nevertheless, we must go for a collaborative learning sharing our work experiences through adaptive learning and uh, digital class risk scheduling also are very important for uh, assignments and evaluations. So everything has to be blended together so that we can have a better uh, learning for our uh, stakeholders, mostly the students. That is the target group that we are going to practice. So there are different types of learning models and uh, the curriculum that delivered by the teacher in face-to-face mode, that's called face-to-face -face driver model, in which the classroom teaching is supplemented by some uh, online learning, uh, say, uh, live streaming, or by providing them 
are the E materials from your basket. In the rotation model, the students they rotate. They keep on rotating on a fixed schedule. They have the self-paced online learning, so at their own uh, schedule and time, they can access to the information, and it is blended with the traditional face-to-face uh, -face classroom. The flex model says that there are online platform for providers, and they provide most of the curricula, and the teachers provide the on-site support, just like to tutorials to address to a specific group of students for so the average learners, the slow learners. This is very effective. So for doubt clearing, you can have a group of students who can approach, and then you can have an online platform. You can utilize them and deliver uh, in the, uh, the doubt clearing classes uh, tips to them. And the online lab would specifically mean that there are online platforms which have been created, and they will deliver the entire course. Okay, so the presence of the teachers is not required. The teachers will have a passive role. Anyone can supervise learning. So any adult so supervisor will be there just to ensure the professional ethics being maintained and sanctity of the classrooms are being uh, And the self-blame, the self-blame, the students choose to take. The self-blame mode, it is students have to take the remote online courses they have their own traditional curriculum with them, and they will take the remote online courses, and then the uh, the online driver. The online driver model will have they will have online platforms. Teachers will there will there in online mode, and they remember all the curriculum. Students will work at a distance off campus, and association. So this is optional. This is not mandatory. So that. Uh, so what we have realized that F2F driver, rotation, flex, online lab, self blame online lab. So these are very important and especially uh, the online driver, this, the one that is the last one, is, <coughs> is very much, you know, um, this is the one we almost uh, use during this uh, COVID-19 lockdown with all the students and teachers, they work remotely. Because they were dissociated from one another, uh, from the physical association was not there, they were disconnected, so everything was online. And so that this sort of mode was very important. And then uh, the flipped learning, so two different models were MDCs, one is called as the flipped learning. So this is total an inversion, it's an inversion of the concept of classroom teaching and homework. And the teachers, uh, <clears throat> so in the flipped learning, the te teachers, they prepare the reading materials, they share the e-resources, and they provide the web links, and the online Video lessons are ready to be delivered to the students so they can have a self study at the home if they're separated from the teachers. And the problem solving, the doubt clearing can be done in groups. As assignments also can be done. And here the, in, in the flipped learning, the, the teachers have got a different type of role uh, to play, so like, like a, so mostly for a passive role. In the gen next, in the next generation pedagogy model, as they call it. So, so what we have learned from our flipped learning is that uh, actually there is not much of a direct or active role to be played by the teachers. There are no lectures by the teachers; they only provide the materials and go for doubt clearing. So, in the next, in the next generation pedagogy model, which we have. Uh, <coughs> Um, this, this is a model that is uh, uh, that's going to work as it is believable in the next generation to addressing to the requirement of the next generation learners that you can integrate the available um, online courses uh, which are av av available internationally on international platforms 
or you can develop your own indigenous online courses to suit your uh, syllabus to address to the curriculum and you can integrate both you can have the both that benefits of the available online courses uh, say um, uh, from digital platforms like Coursera, edx and all that and uh, you can have your own uh, books which you can develop to match the requirements of your target students so you can integrate those to your academic curriculum you should restructure your academic curriculum so that you can take advantage of the externally available books uh, good online lectures given by say some professors so MIT or Harvard say principles of biochemistry for example or say elements of cytogenetics for example or something uh, on the anthropology or uh, from geology or geography you will find something is really good enough so you can integrate that to your own curriculum and also you can have your own own MOOCs which developed by your own teachers and you can attach some credit transfer to that so about 20 percent credits that has been uh, in the draft national education policy also uh, that they have indicated that some credit transfers will be there those students will be taking the online courses will have about the credit weightage so for the UGM PG students they will be highly more motivated if there will be a provision of facility for credit transfer and um, see I can give an example so Bits Pilani for example so they have collaborated with the MOOCs platform EDS, that is that, that has been prepared by the Harvard and uh, MIT. Uh, and then they have integrated into their own uh, on-campus and off-campus uh, students, which is very much useful. And the Islam College in New Delhi, they have also collaborated with the MOOCs platform course. They have signed MOU with them and then they can access, their students will be able to access certain courses which are there in the EDS or Coursera platform. So this sort of uh, facility is very important. So blended learning uh, has different tools, techniques, and platforms already, and uh, like say Kahoot and Socrative and Cusillate, and where these are all these are all you know ways and means how you can connect the students either in the class, in the classroom, or the classrooms or at home uh, for revision studies, for doubt clearing and all that. Classes are at home. I mean, in campus, off campus students. So they can, they, if they have some deficiencies uh, to learn certain things, um, clearing their doubts, they can able to do that. So different types of learning platforms uh, have been provided to them and, and different modes. So some are game based, some are student response system based, some are using the flash cards and all that. So there has been a plethora of um, resources, e resources at hand already. And as I have already referred to Coursera, EDX, Udemy, and all that. And uh, in India, we have indigenous national program on technology and dance learning, uh, and uh, different uh, um, modes on which we call the learning management systems or platforms like Google Classrooms and uh, Edmodo, Blackboard, Moodle, and all these different types of the learning management systems have developed. And Different modes of the online teaching learning have already been identified and we have been using it. Um, uh, so different types of these online platforms available like Google Meet, WebEx Meeting, Zoom Meeting, they are very important for live stream. These are all virtual classrooms for online uh, teaching. They are all online classes, or virtual classrooms. And you can address through live stream, you can address a large number of participants. Unlike Skype and all that, Skype is good for con conducting interviews, but for addressing large number of students at different geographical locations, Google Meets is the one that we are experiencing now, of course, with certain uh, uh, difficulties in accessing, but we are still managing it. Okay, and uh, different types of social media have already been like YouTube and the Facebook and Twitter for live streaming. There are available email, SMS, WhatsApp messages, and all different apps are there. You can have your own personal blogs, okay? And learning by the system, as I already told you, Google Classroom, Moodle, and all that. They're all free and open source. And uh, 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 there are different open courses where I have uh, to thank profusely Professor Srikant Mishra, who is an expert in this open uh, educational resources. And he has uh, um, 
given us uh, account of a very wide array of the different modes of online teaching, like international resource and platform during his lecture yesterday. The <coughs> in addition to the MIT open courseware, uh, the OU courses, open courses library, open lab. So all these are now available. And higher education in India has taken already uh, a paradigm shift. And thanks to the vision of uh, Prime Minister um, in, in, sorry, uh, okay, India, so both the central government as well as the state government, they are highly cooperative, uh, they are very considerate, and with their support and vision for uh, making uh, the ICT enabling of all the universities and colleges and the teachers, the students. So we are now experiencing uh, a, a world of digital transformation and the National Digital Laboratory, National Academy Depository, Swim and Swim uh, platforms for both UG and uh, PG students, structures and MOOCs. So, and the best thing is, now even if there's a lack of connectivity, uh, but there is a there, there, facility that using the 32 of these uh, DTA channels are not available. Uh, so in television sets at remote villages also one can try this on, on regular round the clock. Uh, educational uh, programs are now being broadcast. So um, national program on technology and national learning, NPTEL, is an initiative of the MHRD and this platform uh, is very vibrant and provides majority of the web and web resources on different aspects uh, of teaching, teaching disciplines like science, engineering, uh, medicine, and management, and all that. Like. So uh, the ICDD initiatives have already uh, been taken up and strengthened from time to time as uh, a part of the higher education in Odisha, the e part Salar, the e part Cheka, Hekram, e Adhayan, Shod Ganga, Vidwan, they're all in place. And of late, uh, precisely uh, during this uh, uh, COVID 19 lockdown period, as we have all experienced the difficulties of addressing to the requirements of the students, especially in situations of physical dissociation. The government of India has realized to go for uh, bringing about certain changes. So historic decision has been taken by the MHRD and under this aegis, the University Grants Commission has uh, given a guideline, formulated a set of principles on how to uh, set the uh, academic calendar and examinations and there they have categorically advised to use the uh, the ICT tools and other digital and online teaching uh, tools to cover about 25% of the syllabus and remaining 75% of the syllabus can be uh, dealt in as it used to be in the conventional face-to-face -face teaching mode. But this 25% syllabus will be considered as a self-study by the students. That doesn't mean that the teachers will have um, to, to just leave this for the students entirely by themselves. It's not like that. There will be a guided self study where the students uh, will be supported or facilitated by the teachers, but not in the classroom. The information will be provided to them. So, from the syllabus, some distinct components, certain units, certain subjects will be taken up by the students uh, them, themselves. So materials will be provided to them from the e-basket and some printed text materials also will be shared like uh, notes and uh, books and, uh, uh, and these will be available to them uh, both uh, online and uh, so that they can be self-spaced so at their own convenience and time they will be able to uh, to make those learning uh, materials intelligible to them. If they have certain doubts and all, they can always come back to these teachers for doubt clearing. So uh, the uh, the focus on this sort of uh, uh, UGC guidelines are more to standardize the learning resources and to ensure that teaching becomes equitable 
learning becomes you know inclusive so it will be up to so the, the majority of the students should, should be accommodated uh, and the, the learning uh, should be made uh, uh, easier and so they can able to access the the knowledge that should be made available to them so collaborative learning uh, will take place through participatory role of both the teachers and students okay and there are different quadrants so four quadrant uh, uh, component uh, configuration as envisaged by the UGC for online learning on the e-tutorials uh, based on the video and audio lectures, animation, simulation, virtual labs and all that. The e-content we have already talked about that the books, the e-books, the PDF mode, uh, the PDF format of the books can be given, uh, the lecture notes, the illustrations, new demonstrations, simulations and all that for interactive studies and the web resources, different web platforms uh, will provide it to them and then for assessment, the multiple choice questions, problems, quiz and all that. So there are four different, so e-tutorials, e-content, web resources and self-assessment. There are the four different uh, components uh, of online learning and UGC is emphasizing that all this must be given equal importance. Coming to virtual labs, the different type of um, concept that uh, virtual labs have been developed by MHRD also in collaboration with the uh, different IITs, IIT Hyderabad, IIT Madras, uh, then IIT Kharagpur, IIT Ruti, IIT Gauhati. Uh, you can see at the, at the end of this picture, the large number of the IITs are involved in that. And also Amrita Vishwa Vidyapitam, that has got also uh, quite a important role that's played. So these set of virtual labs are multi-purpose. Both it addresses to teaching as well as to research. And they use, you know, the graphical user interface. Some different programs will be there, and there will be, say, predicted outcomes. So you can have a remote access to labs in various disciplines of science and engineering, and it is very useful for the undergraduate and postgraduate students as well as the scholars. And suppose you uh, are telling the students uh, that how the sinusoidal waves patterns will be shown on the oscill oscill oscilloscope with the different, say, uh, variations in the frequency. So about say, 50 to 500 kilohertz you are giving as an alternative current. And then how uh, the wave pattern on the appearing on the oscilloscope. So that the computer takes up this as an algorithm, that this is important. Then there is a little command so will be in there. And the machine learning uh, will allow uh, different types of Newer computations, companies, all different types of wave patterns can be shown. Similarly, square pulse. You are using a DC uh, direct current pulse. What are the type of the uh, uh, square pulses or exponential decaying pulses that are available? So this sort of you know training, which can be uh, possible uh, through the virtual mode. This is multi-purpose, as I said, and provide a complete LMS learning management system where the students can access it from a distance. It's called remote access. This is very important. So something is happening in IIT Gauhati. This can be shared by the students uh, by the Kanakpur, for example. So regardless of the geographical distance and the socioeconomic background, they are all made available. So students are there at their own place, even if they are separated, but at different places, different places. Uh, and even if the facility does not exist at their own place, but they can have a feeling. So it's called the universal learning address. So they will be they will be taken to a world of uh, conceptualizing things. So even if they are placed at a distance. So this type of concept has been taken up by IIT Gohat, for example, developed a structured virtual lab. And by, for example, um, I can give another one, the taxi labs, which is also interactive virtual lab. Suppose you want to demonstrate how cell fusion takes place, how hydrodomas are created, how the cancerous or hella cells are fused to the B lymphocytes. So you can animate the whole thing. Okay. Say uh, you can have certain protocol testing. You can develop some protocols. The protocols are set there. So modules are given there. Okay, so how cell fusion takes place, or how DNA is extracted, how polymerase reaction takes place for 
uh, DNA fingerprinting and all that, or demonstration uh, application the forest in science and all that. So you can see that the pipettes are being uh, lifted and they are um, sucking the chemicals from solution A and solution B is added, then solution C is added. So the template DNA has been already extracted, primers are added, enzymes are added. So all these things you are just visualizing. Okay, so this is that certain softwares have been developed and you can uh, give, give, the, the, uh, give to the students so they will install these softwares, the personal laptop, and they can experience as if an experiment is being conducted. So this is called as the interactive virtual lab. So they can, at the same time also can interact with other students in the group and with their mentor. And augmented reality or AR is coming up in higher education. This is a platform that includes both virtual reality and the real world environment. This is very, it's a combination, very effective combination approach. We call the AR approach, so that you can have, uh, say, different. You can build up different 3D models on, say, health, architecture, or uh, some geological or geographical. Uh, um, materials, uh, principles. So you can, uh, so for example, you can augment different educational apps. Different educational apps have already been de developed and that will augment or facilitate the health education. Uh, so this, this is, this is a, what is wonderful facility that combines both virtual reality here as well as the real world. And so it will enhance uh, the perception of the students. Okay, so by and it will also enhance interaction with the real world with the virtual graphics and sound and touch feedback and all that. And the augmented reality or AR uh, facility, uh, the benefits of this in health education has already been emphasized. And uh, uh, say, for example, uh, the, the picture at the bottom, you can see there's got the Bucky Bob. This is the uh, Buckminster Full Row. Okay, so is there in the book, and the, an app has been provided to the mobile and mobile phone. Put the app in it on the book, and you will have the feeling that as if that ball is coming up. All the 3D structure of that is being revealed. Similarly, the human atlas, the human anatomy atlas app can be given so that you can have a 3D modeling of the human body. This is the way how you can enhance the capacity of the learner to perceive. Say so you can have a app, Google Sky Map, for example. The Sky Map app is very, very useful for the students of space and astronomy. They'll just show the mobile with the app to the sky and the app will enable the student to learn how this the constellation of the stars are there up in the sky. So for realizing this, the, and to uh, get the benefits, so with the benefits of the blended learning, the faculty needs to be empowered. Because as you all understand, the faculty are the agents of change. The teaching faculty uh, must give themselves always recharged from time to time so that they revive uh, they keep on, on learning, learning and relearning. So they must uh, empower them themselves to be able to continue as an effective uh, teacher. And uh, they know how to assess themselves to micro-teaching and all that. And remain at the cutting edge, they have to undergo also uh, the transformation in the ability to teach so that they will be relevant. They continue to remain relevant for the uh, students. So to uh, sum up my lecture, coming to a paradigm shift, this is very important. Uh, we have already talked about that we have moved from the uh, watertight classroom learning to the open learning, making the learning from interdisciplinary to interdisciplinary, and from a limited small group of target audience, we have made, made the learning more pervasive, more open, more ubiquitous, and almost uh, free everyone to access and from rigid syllabus centric syllabus to make it more flexible and learner centric and from the passive uh, transfer of knowledge to make it more active and exploratory and 
experiential uh, learning to project based uh, field work based pedagogy has also been very useful. So this is to sum up how much paradigm shift has taken place. And of course, uh, we have several issues that remain to be addressed. And we need to have uh, the, the enhance the quality of our multimedia courseware and the faculty strength and diversity with different domain expertise are also uh, a requirement. And to sum up blended learning, as I already told you, that is a combination of the best tools to integrate, to scaffold the learning process, the classical learning process by digital initiatives, very important, to make the education more sustainable and non collapsible Because we are going to address to the new generation students, which are to be HDFF board, high definition future fit. That means they must be intellectually responsive, culturally responsible, ethically sensitive, and proficient uh, in the profession. So this is very important. So the triple A has given us the ability of making the knowledge transfer more portable and accessible so that we can have a globally competitive uh, course content. And then we can join the global uh, race for internalization. And uh, the classroom-based conventional uh, learning with the traditional mode of teaching with the teacherly love, affection, concern and care for the students with the built-in uh, passion for teaching with their compassion, empathy and ethics are all impregnated, embedded, uh, embedded in their uh, our learning criteria and that has to be blended with the new knowledge uh, with the advent of the technology. So that is very important. And uh, by this, we can uh, end up um, with a few um, humble suggestions of mine that we can integrate the innovative digital tool that we have in regular classroom teaching to make it more effective. We can incentivize um, and the government is very supporting, both the central and the state government is very, very supportive in incentivizing uh, the sort of learning process in the digital era by making certain investment in purchasing educational softwares and virtual laboratory packages, which are offered by the company, which are very expensive and not affordable by the average uh, institutions and the students. So they must be made available to the students. And options for self-paced courses instead of live streaming, because live streaming sometimes get disconnected, not very effective. So self-paced courses options must be given to students so they can schedule their own uh, learning timing and all that, and they can access whenever they are, they are free and, and the courses are made available to them. And all the universities should be encouraged the own educational apps, the books, and set up the technology business incubators for making new products. And they can have to introduce credit based courses. So universities can record their own lectures given by their own teachers. They should collect the lecture notes, the printed materials, and as it used to be earlier also, they can prepare an e-repository and important thing is now that we have to move on and on and on so india was once upon a time the adi vishwa guru and now it is going to be the vishwa guru obviously and to be self-reliant we call atman yuhar bharat because we have been keeping pace with the changing dynamics of uh, higher education and we can regain our lost glory and we can again emerge as a talent hub in the global east. So uh, it will be a preferred destination of the international scholars. They don't have to physically come because of the obvious implications. But we can share our online courses, which we develop to make it globally competitive so that the international scholars and institutes all over the world will look up uh, to India and our, our courses. Uh, will be more internationalized and will be acceptable, appreciable by the scholars all over the world. So with this, I thank um, Professor Deepak Behra and his team at Sambalpur University 
for having kindly provided to me uh, this online platform uh, to share with my experiences and my ideas with the viewers. I thank profusely the higher education department, government of India, and particularly uh, the higher education uh, council, uh, uh, state higher education council, uh, and uh, in person, to Professor Ashoka Das, my previous Vice Chancellor of the University, who is holding a responsible position as Vice Chairman of this Council for his support for this webinar series. I thank all my predecessor speakers who have given me the clue and the idea, and they have motivated me uh, to take up this sub subject, uh, which are having interface with some of their own. Uh, lectures which they have already developed. I thank profusely uh, my colleagues at North Coast University and all, at other universities and all the postgraduate, undergraduate students, which are scholars, teachers, and honorable vice chancellors and the uh, bureaucrats of the uh, higher department for viewing uh, this lecture. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Professor Chand. Uh, thank you so much for uh, this fascinating, mind-blowing lecture and uh, we all enjoyed uh, you know watching your uh, quite impressive slides uh, we all, all would love to have uh, this slide ppt and uh, you know uh, we enjoyed uh, technological disruption cannot be avoided and uh, but what i like you know sometimes this overuse of the digital platform may lead to a kind a form of uh, deprivation uh, especially for our student from low economic bracket living in remote areas. And uh, now, see, we can uh, equip our uh, teachers, you know, by providing them some kind of training. But what about our students? They don't have, um, many of them have don't have smartphone, dongle, laptop, and uh, good internet uh, connectivity in remote areas. So how, this is a, do you think that, uh, you know, the private university, they're a big player. They will take advantage of this post-COVID situation, post-COVID situation, and there will be a widening of gap between the public university and private university. How we overcome all these challenges, you know? And uh, I like your uh, uh, second part of uh, uh, the caption, uh, blended learning as the new normal. I like it very much. but. Uh, Maybe, you know, before uh, we start raising this question, but remember this one, because we are running short of time. I request uh, my colleague, uh, our moderator, Professor Osak Mahapatra from the Department of English to be very quick and uh, move on to different questions which have been raised by our uh, landed uh, participant. So, Professor Mahapatra, your time. Well, thank you very much, sir, for your very carefully thought out lecture which is very rich in information. I wish only that this lecture, which had generated a lot of response, could have been uh, suitably brief so that we, we would have been able to take up all the questions. But to begin with, the most important uh, question that has been raised by uh, Professor Ashoka Das, Vice Chairman, Higher Education Council, and I quote, I do not agree that traditional methods of learning would abstract and uh, non-life centric nor did it have any value systems in fact i would say that the new education has left sustainable value system and is more commercialized and mechanical the only link to life is how much can one consume and how fast so he wants you to respond to is observation. It's not a question, in fact, it's just an observation, and he wants you to respond to that. I perfectly agree with Professor Shukha Das um, that the traditional methods of learning were uh, life centric. There's, there's no doubt about that, because that's how they have influenced the intellectual and the moral uh, values of the disciples. The students so we still invite that and we still afford that that's the reason why we cannot substitute we cannot replace the classical advantages 
of our traditional learning system. That's the best method, I would say. But only in case of an emergency, only in case of, say, a physical dissociation from the students. How can the uh, students in the target group uh, will access the teachers? So at a distance mode, off campus, which is uh, uh, forced by such an unprecedented situation like the COVID-19, for example, we must have to have a preparedness for that. That is saying that if you uh, sweat less at peace, at leisure, you bleed less at war. You sweat more, you sweat more during the peace you will bleed less at war. So preparedness is very important. We should be prepared. So that's the reason why the U.S. has thought of the 25% syllabus will be covered by self-study by the students with the surveillance by the teachers and 70% will be dealt in the classroom. That, that's a wonderful blending, I would say. However, teaching can be more effective. I, I do not agree with Professor Das in saying that the more commercialized and mechanical, it's it's not fully correct though, because, because see, when there is an R and D activity has gone in with the advancement in science technology, new tools and techniques will emerge, and we should take advantage of these new, new tools and techniques to make our knowledge transfer and dissemination effective. Knowledge is there. Gurus were considered the epitome of knowledge and wisdom, and they were regarded. Uh, uncompromising, inflinching regards for them by the circles may make the spirit of learning more lively. That's fine, that's okay. But now, this, this Gurukul Ashram is not held anymore. So we have to have to adopt this digital learning as a major component of the blended learning. We cannot, you know, undermine the importance of the digital learning, notwithstanding the fact that they are not effective at times due to lack of connectivity, as I said. If the bandwidth is not there, so you go for a TV on channeling, as in Kerala they adopted, that most of these educational apps are being given uh, through television. And so, so as Ramayana and Mahavata when was being uh, telecast, broadcast in tele television. I know several neighbors used to come and sit in our house before uh, it was telecast. So they were sitting to a village also, TV sets are there. So somehow, somehow you have to uh, have a balance between the technology and the compassionate teaching. As, as rightly said by Professor Das, I have full regards for his understanding. Uh, but I do not only agree that it is only meant for consumerism. There is a corporatization of higher education. I know that the knowledge in the knowledge driven society, knowledge is the intellectual capital. More you have the knowledge on the global talent for the competition worldwide, more even powerful knowledge has become the power. So Thank it you. is the knowledge capital, as we say. Sir, so I'll make a sir, Babu, I'll sir. make a short interjection. The question was sir, sir, provoked, sir. provoked by one of your slides, which compared sir. the traditional method with the new method and so sir. showed value learning in as a part of the new methods. I definitely do not agree that the new method yes. incorporates value. In fact, there is no direct incorporation of any value system in the new system. The traditional system, at least the teacher was the value. So that yes, was the provocation. I, so that yes, was provoked by one of your slides. I will not take uh, more time. Might, we can discuss later. No, no, that, Thank you very much. That might, no, I fully agree with you that the the traditional system was value based. Maybe during making slides, perhaps that has been a flip flop in my, when I was doing the word processing. Otherwise, because I fully agree with you, agree with you that the value based system was impregnated, embedded in a classical system. Now, value based plus the new technology that makes teaching effective. I fully agree with you and, and apologize to you if there is a mistake in my slide preparation. Here is a question from Professor Atanuk Pati, Vice Chancellor, GM University. You use the three terms classroom training, e learning, and e teaching in your talk. Would you please explain these terms apropos cognitive abilities of the learners? I think blended pedagogy will certainly depend on the aforesaid abilities. Your response, sir. Well, the cognitive abilities is 
It's already there, you know, it's awareness, you know, it's, it's already there. So it has to be supplemented with the e-learning. So that, that reinforces, that, that reinforces the process of learning. See, the knowledge transfer itself is not enough. Knowledge can be transferred, disseminated, but at the other end, it has to be perceived. So the cognitive learning has to back up with the technological learning process with the new pedagogical tools so that will be very effective at the, at the, uh, at the process of interiorization or internalization. We have to internalize the knowledge that is received, perceived and acquired. Then only it will be retrievable at will. You can retrieve that at the time of need and you can make an application of that. So the cognitive learning has to be empowered by an augmented or facilitated by this additional input and those will make learning available and accessible okay so that is that is an equitable way how to make learning more inclusive and ubiquitous so e-learning is a part of this e-teaching and e-learning they have to be <laughs> they have to be put together so e-teaching does not mean e-learning e-teaching is a way how to use the digital tools to disseminate the knowledge, to transfer the knowledge. But, but whether the knowledge take, the knowledge is transferred effectively or not, whether learning takes place or not. Teaching becomes effective when learning happens, when learning takes place. That's the reason why the role of the teacher has been uh, a transformational change now it has undergone from knowledge provider to a knowledge facilitator. They have to Thank facilitate you, the process of learning. And we have uh, very specific questions. How can we adapt digital pedagogy and learning management system in the state of Odisha? How can we make our teachers efficient in learning management system? Well, uh, we are very fortunate, I must say, that our basically a pedagogue and a technocrat, they may not be the same person. It's highly unlikely that a pedagogue can be a technocrat or a technocrat can be a pedagogue. Only in ideal situations or expectations, they can be twin one. So the importance of Technology to set in the process of pedagogy. We can have a um, this uh, the system, the learning system, as you were and they have been uh, very effective. Learning management has been very, very effective already, as I have already shared with you. There have been different modules of uh, learning management systems, like scheduling of classes, for example. It can be easily done. Scheduling of classes or say sharing of contents, discussion forum, learning analytics, assignments. These are the five different components of a learning management system. So you can develop a, a, a system like say Blackboard or Moodle or the Canvas or Edmodo or something. So this is the, the, the IT professionals. If you have IT department, I'm sure most of the universities they have um, uh, the MCA uh, computer science uh, as a department and the faculty which are quite aware of all this. So they can develop certain packages, some softwares, okay, for, which will enable the class scheduling, the, uh, uh, the, the sharing of the e-commerce, the discussion forum, they already been there in place. So many universities have already done it, but for the Uttar, for the Uttar, Varampur, Sambalpur, and the state universities in, in the, the, the public funded university, there is a difficulty of accessing to enough for that. The many problems is there, but the government of Odisha has been very supportive. They have incentivized uh, uh, to a great extent of developing a teaching learning ambience because that is uh, the, the, the second criterion out of the seven and NAC criteria and the first type in the NIF ranking. So giving an importance to the NAC um, and the NIF ranking process, government of Odisha has realized 
uh, as much as at Central University, that everybody, all universities, or for the, at least the public funded universities, which are really deficient in uh, having enough funds for doing that, they must be encouraged to do that. See, they are addressing to a heterogeneous group of students of different socioeconomic background. Students cannot afford, unlike the private funded universities, when they are addressing to a privileged section of students, a target audience, the public funded universities have to address to the requirement of the slow learners, the uh, fast learners, the average learners, the medium learners, and learners from different uh, uh, backgrounds, socioeconomic backgrounds. They cannot afford themselves for a learning management system package. So a package has to be indigenously developed. That has to be developed by the IT uh, uh, professors, uh, the, the technocrats who are, who are dealing with the students and know their problems at a close-up. So they handle the students, they know what are the basic problems. They can sort it out. So in their package, they have, say, voice compatibility. So the object, voice, uh, the modalities have to be worked out, uh, which will be friendly for the user, for their own students. So perhaps it, it may so happen that our packages will be acceptable to other universities. They are so interested in the package. So those have to be developed indigenously if we are unable to afford it. Is contemplate employing the locally available young talents to develop e-contents and online courses so that to some extent the unemployment problem can be addressed, however, subject to strict quality control. What is your view, sir? I, I, I would fully agree. I would fully agree. Uh, well, see, uh, if, if I quote Upanishad, Sa vidya ya bimuktai. Education is for liberation. It's a liberal education. But in a parody, we, we always often say that Sa vidya ya nijuktai. The, the education that can lead to um, uh, employability. So I would say that if you have a talent, the skill of using and uh, using the online tools and techniques to develop e-contents, then why not you join and hold um, the university system or the IIT system to develop an incubator? Okay, and can develop products, okay, which can be useful to our own students because you know the local problems, the local difficulties and constraints, and the requirements of our students. So I would say that this is a very welcome approach. Why not uh, going for uh, a mechanism to make our young, talented youth to be employed, to pass on a technique and technology like this, to develop such courseware, e-courseware, uh, to make them available to the students to cater to the uh, requirement of the next generation learner. I think it is very welcome uh, proposal, I would say. I would uh, uh, salute for this sort of new ideas. Uh, in the young, someone may be very young to so ask this question. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I wish we really had time to take more questions, but um, you have been very very passionate about the points you made with a lot of conviction and thank you very much we had a wonderful session and now over to professor uh, uh, professor chang uh, again uh, i would like to extend my heartfelt thanks uh, uh, you spoke really well and uh, i'm sure you know our participant must have been benefited quite a lot by your you know thought provoking lecture once again thank you professor chang and thanks all the honorable once, vice president so, so once again, I take this opportunity yeah. to place and record my deep sense of gratitude on behalf of North Coast University for giving us a platform during this webinar series, lecture series, uh, and the web link you have kindly provided to my colleagues that they could uh, access this presentation. Thank you very much for giving this opportunity. And this is actually a very productive engagement of the university teachers and the scholars during this COVID-19 lockdown. This justifies. You are, you are the force justifies uh, the, the, the target. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, once again, to your team, the excellent teamwork, and that has taken us to the success of this webinar. So thank you very much, Professor Behra. Thank, thank thanks, you. Professor Chan, and uh, just uh, for your and information, thanks. for your information, you know, uh, I'm and going to.
Thanks to all my viewers, all the viewers, all the vice chancellors, honorable vice chancellors and technocrats, the teachers, the scholars, the students, everybody. I thank from the core of my heart for being there to join us. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks, Professor Chan, and thanks everyone. And the webin webinar session is over.